So this is some of the work actually he's done. It's been done for a little while now as by a researcher out of the United Kingdom, Roger Smith. And basically, he had, he's done probably the most, uh, as, as far as a clinical study is concerned, he's probably done the best job of trying to do a controlled clinical trial. Still very difficult to do a complete controlled clinical trial, but it showed some nice evidence of that you do have a response from treating tendon injuries, specifically of the, of the flexor tendons, so bow tendons uh, with stem cells. Now he got his basic, his best response from national hunt horses, where you can see basically a, a, a large decrease in re-injury rate. So the biggest thing is these horses will go back and re-injure themselves. And so after treating them with the stem cells, the actual re-injury rate was much less. So from 56% down to 18%. And didn't see that quite a greater response um, in the actual flat racing horses, but it was down to 55% from 66%. So he did see some, and this was a large group of horses, so there was some evidence there that in the flat racing horses, you do have a decreased uh, re-injury rate. But this is the problem, okay? <laughs> this is what we see. This is, this is a tendon lesion, which is a large core lesion right there. And trying to, trying to have this regenerate to a normal tendon again, I don't think any stem cell will make that happen. So the idea, I think, behind all these things, it's gonna be early intervention. So we wanna be treating tendons when there's mild tendonitis to give those cells their best chance to regenerate it. By the time it gets to this stage, it's gonna be very difficult. Now some horses respond and have a, a, a pretty good, decent chance to come back, but it's much, much less than if you get something early and treat it appropriately at that right time. So we're looking at early diagnosis and early intervention with stem cells to give them their best chance. The other things uh, we looked at with fractures, cystic bone disease, uh, things like that, we're just starting to look at those. I've got some different models going on in the horses as well as in some sheep and trying to figure out the best way and the best timing to treat those. We're still early on in, in trying to treat uh, the different types of bone injuries. Uh, we're doing more and more joint therapy, and this is a, this is a case where it had a, basically a, ho a horse that had some subchondral bone um, damage to the third carpal bone in the knee. And you can see it lit up on the bone scan, and we did a CT on it, and you could see a hairline fracture it was going right like this. So they stopped on this horse just at the right time. So maybe another training, a training event, another one like, can you guys see that little fracture there? Um, that's a, just a, a CT of the third carbo bone. Another training event that probably would have broken off and slabbed that whole piece off, which would have been a career ending. Uh, now you look in here, you can see on the joint surface, the cartilage is still pretty much intact, and, but that's where it would have broken through right there. So instead of uh, basically having to go and uh, basically put a screw across that and such, now we're gonna go in and we're gonna try to basically put the stem cells here. We're gonna tr treat the damaged cartilage here. And uh, actually I'll show you a little video, but we apply a stem cells in a fiber and glue right on top of the cartilage to help that heal better. And uh, this is what the procedure looks like. It's done under uh, arthroscopy and this is within the joint and we're looking with a scope right, right in this area. This, this is the fracture line here. And so we put the stem cells in with a fiber and glue which ends up sticking right onto that site. So we help try to heal that cartilage site from the articular. Now should we probably do in also an administration in the bloodstream so they get to the bone? Yeah, that's probably another way to think of, of doing it as well. So these, these are the kind of injuries that we're dealing with right now. So when you're thinking about these things as far as, okay, how can we put these into work and how can we be prepared to use the stem cell therapy most effectively in our patients and in our horses? And I think that what we've learned, especially what we've seen and also in the sources that uh, when people collect, that the earlier that you get the stem cells, the likely that they are more potent. So if you wanna plan ahead, it's really nice if you can have that potential to store the stem cells right from the beginning. So right when you get them from when the foal's born. So either the cord blood or the cord tissue, there's a great tissue, great sources for stem cells. And so we're looking at, you know, three to five years 
of storage only. And so you can also just store that as a resource. And then if the horse shows some evidence, basically, that it can be a, a, an athlete as a two-year-old, then at that point, and even that point, you can take those cells and expand them into doses that could be used for therapy. And that's one of the big things you want to plan for is when, when your horse goes into training, you want to have those, those stem cells ready because we think the earlier, t earlier that you get the stem cells to the site of injury, the better healing response you'll get. So the other thing you could do, if you did miss the cord blood or cord tissue, you can get the bone marrow when they're young, even at a yearling stage. And you can actually just store that resource. You can freeze the bone marrow and have that there waiting. And uh, that's, that's doable. And then we've done this in the laboratory, of taking that frozen bone marrow, unthawed it, and then cultured up the stem cells. So you can use that same, same scenario as saying when that horse goes into training, if it looks like it has potential, you could take the bone marrow, thaw it out, and expand it up and have the stem cells ready to go. So it's a good resource because we know that the, there's more stem cells the younger the animal is, and there's, they are more potent. So if you already have horses in training and you have a, a good horse that you want to take out some sort of a, like an insurance policy and have some stem cells there uh, for early treatment, then we are recommending that you have a, take the sources either from the fat or the bone marrow and have them cultured up and frozen. So we can easily get 40 million cells in a few weeks, um, probably three weeks to do that. But it's much better than waiting three weeks after the injury. So if you have an injury and you have the stem cell stored, you just stored, you just call the lab up and say, you know, my horse has an early tendon lesion, an early tendonitis. I'd really like to treat that right now. And so you may, in the long run, you have that, those stem cells, they'll help regenerate the tendon. You have a lower layup time overall because the horse may not be gone for six months, maybe only three months if you catch it early and treat it appropriately. Okay, so those are some of the thoughts. And the other thing is we're dealing with, with stallions. And if you have stallions, when they, right when they get out of their career, basically that's when the time we should collect their samples because you know, they live a long time. And so when they get up into the teens, that's when they start having problems. And their stem cells from the bone marrow or fat at that time aren't as potent. So we always are recommending people to take their stallion right when they're re getting out of the, uh, basically out of the performance. So those are some things to think about. And uh, where we're going in the future, we got a lot of questions and uh, we got a lot of answers to, to come up with. We've seen some clinical responses, but I think the future is gonna be fairly promising with what we've seen so far.